Welcome to Zoo Tours, the channel that takes you on a virtual field trip to the zoo and teaches you a thing or two about the animals we see. You're probably here because you love animals. Well, then I recommend you grab one of these fallow bracelets. Every purchase also comes with a bio card of your personal animal and a QR code that lets you track them right on your phone. Some of your money goes to nonprofits that saves wildlife. Just be sure to use the promo code ZOOTOURS to get 20% off your bracelet. Hey, hey guys, guess what? I made it back to Brookfield. Now you don't have to bother me to go anymore. I'm actually kidding, and I get it. After all, this is one of America's must-see zoos. Past couple weeks, we've talked about exhibits with historical value. I'd say a majority of what you'd see at Chicago's Brookfield Zoo was still around to see the park's opening day way back in 1934, which included the Monkey House. But after 62 years, it eventually became a swamp. The swamp was built around the time zoos, let's say, started really trying to use interpretive, interactive, and emotional elements that would encourage guests to actually get involved with environmental causes. After actually looking around and reading everything, I never realized how important swamps actually are. Now just a warning, it's a little dark, so your screen will get its fair share of grains from this today. And before we start, I want to thank Virtual Zoo Tours for joining me on my visit and also covering my admission. So I please ask that you go to his channel and subscribe as soon as possible. The front entrance might as well read, Welcome to Dagobah. First, you'll pass a couple of intro signs. What do you know about the swamp? Well, I know Shrek lives there. People's idea about swamps have changed. Yeah, because of Shrek. Habitats-wise, it starts off big, but simple. They call this the egret pond, with boat-billed herons, snowy egrets, and others that did not show. The zoo already has two reptile slash birdhouses. Well, you might as well say that this is a third. And here is the Amazon milk frog, waxy monkey tree frog, and the Orient night knoll of Cuba. Next was an eastern massasaga, green crested bass, we'll get to you later. The eyelash vipers, eyelashes, aren't for making sweaters. They're actually scales thought to either protect their eyes when they move around the foliage or used as camouflage to break up their outline. You're then nicely asked to come aboard a viewing dock that'll take us to the edge of a huge naturally lit atrium split into three parts. Some might say the detail positively contrasts the neighboring jungle. First up are the rosy-billed poachers, white ibises and scarlet ibises, so vibrant they almost make everything else look black and white around them. Behind us, we're encouraged to press a button and hear a gator's bellow. Which can only mean you're about to see, that's right, the Orinoco Crocodile. Very beautiful, very powerful, but they have one weakness. Their bellies, as bad as it sounds, are way softer to cut than the armor that's on their back. Their skin is sold to make belts, purses, and shoes. This crocodile went from numbering near the million mark to a thousand or so within a few decades. Good news is there are conservationists breeding and releasing the Orinoco crocodile into the wilds of Venezuela. I know how difficult it can be to read, but make sure to appreciate the signage around. This bark indicates how far a tree's been submerged. This display contains a broken down cycle of a falling log, showing that a dead tree is still useful to nature. In this hollowed out tree is a bald faced hornet's nest. There's nothing in here. The purpose of this is to ask you to at least respect the hornet. They're good for pollination and killing other bugs you probably don't care for either. Next up is a South American mix of Leporinus fish, the white blotched river rays. The South American lungfish has the ability to breathe the same air as us as a way to adapt to any droughts. Then there's the green crested basilisk. And by the way, yes, this is a little baby. And no, I'm not making a Harry Potter reference this time. The basilisk is actually a lizard, or the Jesus Christ lizard, due to their incredible ability to run on the water surface at 15 miles per hour. My prayers were not answered to see this, but I did get the next best thing, which was a few seconds of swimming. I had the pleasure of seeing the same thing from their Merton's Water Monitor, a strong swimmer of Australia, followed by three more terrariums, one with a Haitian boa, another with a leaf turtle and their well-hidden friends, and a coiled false water cobra. The fifth part is called the Swamp Fest. It offers a second look at the crocodiles to the left and to the right are fully aquatic tanks. One contains the Suriname toad that has a body so flat that they look like roadkill or boatkill. 
both tanks contains the Cobbs Kaecilian, which kind of looks like a, a snake. Let's go with snake. It's actually a fully aquatic amphibian. They can breathe air at the surface or absorb oxygen from the water through its skin. And if you ever see one wiggle, they're actually trying to increase water and oxygen flow. The center of the platform invites you to find the Anthony's poison dart frogs. And don't forget to enjoy the boat tours. Climb on in and watch a short video on how swamps prevent residential areas from flooding, all while getting another look into the atrium. Now it's time to enter the saw town, an old sawmill. To enhance this building's theme, the zoo placed a tree cutting circular saw in the middle of the room and part of a tree that was already cut. And it even comes with a timeline of when it first sprouted and the world events it was around to see until it was cut down in 1938. This place though is supposed to be abandoned and crawling with other creatures. Giant cave cockroaches, a salmon pink tarantula. There's also a couple of salamanders that somehow made their way in here. Kaiser's newts can only be found in four spring streams in the Zargos Mountain of Iran. The Chinese giant salamander can get up to five feet long. This guy or gal was discovered by the Fish and Wildlife Services in the mail. Since trafficked animals are typically deemed unreleasable, they found their way to the Chicago swamp in 2018. And then over here in the corner, of course I can't forget about the mangrove snake. And past the giant saw is another window to that amazing atrium, the third and biggest and final part. Below are blue winged and puna teals and wood ducks. In the canopy above are roseate spoonbills. Nope, it's not a flamingo, but they are in the same family as ibises. And then there's the white-cheeked Taracos of East Africa, known more as a rainforest bird, but I'm still glad they're here nonetheless. Once you exit the sawmill, make sure to look in this shed for a black rat snake and take it as a lesson to look for snakes if you do own a shed. The archway sign then reads, Welcome to Illinois, which translates to, We're in the final stretch, and we can say hi to every local's favorite river otter. Their sign tells us about how they almost disappeared completely from Illinois. A hundred years ago, they faced overhunting. Then in the mid-1900s, they had to face poor water quality, which brought the population down by less than 100. In the good old 90s, conservationists picked up some otters from Louisiana and then dropped them off in Illinois. And by the 2000s, there were 4,000. A decade later, 15,000 in the state of Illinois. I guess you could say that's the finale, but then you wouldn't be able to give a quick hi and immediate goodbye to their spotted gars, river cooter turtles, and their alligator snapping turtle, which is kept separate. And that does it for one of my favorite attractions at Brookfield and overall one of my favorite all indoor exhibits. If you've never been here before, let me know your thoughts. Next time we are in the west and wild side of Chicago, we'll just step outside and walk next door to explore one of the most infamous zoo exhibits in the world. So stay tuned, see if you can answer this episode's trivia question, and thank you for watching.